Recently, the UH family lost one of our favorites. Mike Wharton, UH football 82 and 84, passed away on October 2nd. Mike was a starter at left guard for the 1984 Southwest Conference champions. In the Cotton Bowl, played against Doug Flutie and BC, Mike walked onto the field at 242 pounds. Mike was a kind man, an affable man, and he was funny. It came natural to him. His dad Hogan was funny too. Hogan was U of H's first All-American in football in 1958. Mike never dreamed of going anywhere other than the University of Houston. Closer to home, Mike was also a valued member of the GoCougs.com community. He often shared insights about offensive line play on our forum. And a few years ago, he sat down with us to record an oral history of that 1984 season. Today, we want to share that with you in his memory. Mike Wharton, football, 82 and 84. Yeah, we and we we all. I mean, in, in us seniors, we we got together. And we just said, "Hey, we we don't want to. I don't want to go through that no more. Let's 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 do something fun, you know, like win." <laughs> <laughs> so then, tell us tell us about walk us through the 1984 season and how that whole, whole thing unfolded. At that at that point in time, you still got SMU that's good. You got Texas who came up pretty really good in '83. Yes. Um, a and M's a solid program, solid to good. Mm-hmm. Arkansas is still pretty dang good. Um, so you, Arkansas was always good. Arkansas, I mean, was, Arkansas was Arkansas was always tough on us. They were just as fast as we were. <laughs> yeah. So you're looking at a schedule that's really dang tough, and then you also spend your second week at Washington, who's in the top ten. Home for Miami right. at Washington and Louisville. But Do Miami, you have any Miami, Miami of Ohio? Yes. Uh, the, the cradle of coaching, I guess, is what they call it. But uh, <laughs> yeah, they uh, we I, I think we beat them pretty good, thirty-one to something. I can't remember. Yeah. But uh, then we went up to University of Washington, and and, and, and man, oh man, I, you know, being most of us being from Texas, we know we didn't know if Washington was on the East Coast or the West Coast. To be honest with you, <laughs> but. Uh, we we went up there and they were they were they were a lot better they were they were a very good football team but it was a funny deal about that guy we fumbled I think we fumbled five times we lost five fumbles that game if I can recall but we we ran the ball all over them we just couldn't hold on to the football uh, they they ended up beating us pretty bad I think it was thirty five to seven or something like that but we we were winning to the to the last play of the first half. It was seven to three, and they scored. They scored a touchdown, and make it ten to seven. And then I think the second half, we just really, we really just started dropping the ball all over the place. And uh, I remember Coach uh, Zerline coming up to me after the game you know, on the plane, and he said, "He said I've never felt so good about a loss." And I said, "Well, that don't make much sense to me, but as long as you don't feel bad about it, I mean, <laughs> let me feel bad about it for a while." But uh, it was a, it was a, it was a strange game. It was a strange atmosphere. You know, it was a. It, it was it was gloomy. It, it was out on out on some point where but a lot of people came on boats. It was a different deal, different different whole thing than what we were used to. Anyway, it was cold too. So, <laughs> but then we uh, came back and we played Louisville, I believe. Yeah, we had winning that game twenty eight to seven at halftime, I think, and we ended up blowing that game. I think. I don't know what I don't I don't remember what it was a general collapse basically. I that I, I didn't understand what happened there. It just it just happened. Are you panicked at that point? No, because even though we lost two games, we we played good in most of the quarters. We had a okay. couple of bad quarters in there, and that was that was about it. But. I, I I didn't I didn't feel much panic at all. It was uh, I, I I can't recall panicking anyway. I, I can recall I can recall now. Now this is over. We, I think we went to uh, we, we go to Baylor next. You know? Yep. Yeah. So you uh, go Baylor, A and M, and 
SMU. Correct. Okay. And you Baylor win game. all three of those games. Right. Right. Uh, Baylor game was a uh, was a was a funny game because it it, it was uh, it got delayed like an hour and a half, two hours because they had a bad storm come through. And if anybody's been to well Floyd Casey Stadium, I don't think it's there anymore. But mm-hmm. you uh, <clears throat> you come you, you, your locker rooms underneath the visitor stands. And you and you come down the stairs, and then you go through this tunnel to come out on the field. Well, the, the the tunnel was flooded. It had about six foot of water in it. So we had to come back down through the through the Baylor band and through, through the stands and everything else. And, uh, <laughs> it was that was that was something else there. But uh, yeah, we 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 whooped in pretty good. It was a uh, it was a uh, the same the same guy that had whooped me two years earlier. His name was Coriot. Out of Baytown, he had whooped me pretty good two years earlier, and I and I was I was really ready to play him, and uh, we 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 handled him pretty good that day. But that was a that was a fun game. Uh, uh, I remember my dad being there, and instead of riding home with the bus, me and my, my right tackle Daryl Jackson, we decided to ride back with Dad, which we knew we were going to get to stop him get a couple of red tops and which you couldn't get on the bus. So mm-hmm. <laughs> that, was, that was a fun, that was a fun ride back. And then, uh, where are we next? We had him. Yeah. Mm-hmm. That was, that was a defensive struggle there. I think we won 10 to six or 10 to seven, nine to seven, something nine like that. Nine to seven. Mm-hmm. Yep. Yeah, they was uh they had uh they had they had they had, that was Jackie Sherrill's first or second year, I believe, and they were they were coming on pretty strong. They had Ray Childers who he wasn't a he wasn't nothing uh fun to deal with. They had Johnny Holland and all those guys. Uh our defense played out, outstanding except for that that's one thing that, that happened all that year. Our defense was just fantastic. Uh uh T J Turner, Eddie Gilmore, Simon Fletcher, uh Brian Wynn, those guys are just terrific players. Just they, they were just very, very good. They, they kept us in a lot of games. Mike, what position are you playing at this point? Left guard. Okay. So did you go up against Childress? No, I didn't. I went up against the other guy. I can't remember his name right now. But okay. uh, I, 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 I had a trap against him. That wasn't no good. <laughs> <laughs> especially, especially, especially when we had a couple of successes and he knew it was coming. <laughs> so that was uh, so two of your three years you beat A and M. Yeah, but A and M wasn't. They were just beginning to get with really Cheryl. Good yeah, in '84, they, they for years, years before that they were just kind of. I mean, they'd have a good year every now and again, but I mean, they were no better than Baylor for. Tech or anybody else, you know, like they just another team. They thought they was better, but they weren't. Well, of course. Well, that's that's held on for another forty years. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but I tell you that man, you know, I, I'm kind of glad I didn't have to go against them in the next few years because they they were generally pretty good. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All right, and then you go to SMU. I assume it's at Texas Stadium again. That's correct. Uh huh. And they were number six in the country. Yeah, we we had a real good game that game. We uh, it was like all games that year it seemed to be raining, and uh, I guess we were good mothers because uh, they uh, they they didn't they didn't they didn't play bad, but we just played really good that game. I mean, we 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 started trapping them and they couldn't figure that out, and then once they did figure it out, they uh, we dumped a little. Play called four eleven, which was a basically a fake trap, and then throw it to the tight end. And Carl Hilton ran ran about sixty yards. That just that put the dagger in him there. Uh, it was a that was a that was a that was a good game for us. That was one of our better games we played. So at that point, <clears throat> I would think that uh, coming off a of SMU <coughs> and being a top ten team like that, especially on the road, I guess are you starting to are you starting to th- think that hey maybe maybe we got something special here despite the early season you know slip-ups we got something going 
it was about the same way after Louisville. I didn't, we, we didn't really think much one way or the other. We, you know, we knew we was three and oh, and I remember, uh, Norm, Norm Hitchcock come up to me and said, y'all just beat the heck out of these guys. He, we, nobody was expecting that. I said, well, I'm, we, we weren't, we weren't not, we weren't going to come in here and try to lose. I mean, we got pretty good players, you know, <laughs> and, uh, but yeah, no, I didn't think about it. I just talked a bit about me personally. I can't really th say that we thought we had something special or anything like that. It just, we just, as long as we kept playing, okay, then good things that happened to us, you know? Right. Yeah. So y'all come home for two games, Arkansas and TCU. Yeah. And at three and oh, you don't expect to lose one of them, but you lost both. Yes, we did. Yeah. Arkansas was always tough for, for us, man. I, like I, like I said earlier, they they were just they were they 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 had some strange defenses, man. <laughs> and uh, I remember I remember Coach Willingham all week long telling us, "Don't do this. They're going to do this. They're going to do this." But when I got to the when we got to the field and got lined up, it didn't look like nothing that we'd been practicing, you uh, know. I remember at halftime, Coach Elman said, what's going on out there, Mike? I said, I, I don't know, man. It, it, it just don't look like anything we've been practicing. And uh, sure enough, uh, unfortunately, I and the sky don't lie. It was just like we were <laughs> – it was just like we were practicing. It, just, it, it, didn't, it didn't look right to me. It didn't look like the same. And uh, they they would – they'd have a little nose guard all the time that was about – I bet he I bet he didn't weigh 190 pounds, but he would line up on one side of Todd Shoppy, the center, and he he'd shoot the gap on my side, and it was a they they were they were good man. I mean, we didn't play very good, but that didn't help anything. But they were they were a decent they were a decent football team. And then you lose again at home to TCU. TCU game was a that was that was just a tough game. TCU was on the comeback to being really really pretty good uh, again. They uh, Wacker was there. They had, a, they had a guy named Keith Davis who was running back. They had a good defense. I mean, I don't think we should have lost. I mean, we shouldn't have lost that game, but we did. And, uh, we dropped a we dropped a pass there at the end that was in the end zone that would have put us ahead. That we we we'd have stayed ahead, but uh, those things happen in football. Okay, so you're three and two in the conference. And you're going to Texas, Texas number three in the country. What is the attitude? What is the team like leading up? It's to been that? a few years since you beat Texas. It's always Parents' Day when we play Texas. Yeah, that, that's what they. I mean, they. That, that's what they call it over there. Parents' <laughs> Day or Parents' Day or something. It, yeah. it, it, it was our. It was our deal every year when we went up there. And so the last time you got to face Texas was in Austin, and you got beat fifty to nothing. That's correct. Fifty to nothing. Five zero or nothing. <laughs> and it's been a few years since y'all have beaten Texas. I believe my red shirt year. Did we tie them that year? Yeah. I think I think that was a that was a tie that year. But yeah, my last visit, my last time playing against Texas was uh, yeah fifty to nothing. So, so talk us through that week leading up to that game and then the game, I guess. Yeah. They, uh, Texas was, Texas was like Baylor for me. It was a, uh, they were, they were really difficult because they played a four man front. That means I had a two technique in front of me and they, they had players. They were very, very good. Uh, so that means I got a bad news real quick ever play. And uh, I, I remember thinking about that all week. I, I remember, I remember the team in general. It was just a. It was just a. It was Texas, but we were going to go up there and play as hard as we could play. But for me personally, it was a bigger challenge week uh, because I knew what was coming, and they they did on defense what we did in 1982. <clears throat> On the offensive line, they every every two series they bring in somebody else, you know, and then they they swap back and forth. So you you had to every time that you uh, 
looked up, you had to figure out who who was going to be there to figure out his tendencies and what he what he did compared to the other guy. Uh, but yeah, defense that day played just outstanding again. I think they had five interceptions or something. It was it was crazy. Uh, offense did not play very well, I don't think, but we played good enough to, to put a few points on the board. And uh, defense played enough to to shut them down. And I, I don't. I think that they were undefeated at the time. I, th- I think they tied Oklahoma in the in in, in the Cotton Bowl that year. But okay. I'm not sure about that. I th- but I think they were undefeated at the time. Okay. So then you've got two games left. We went up to uh, Texas Tech up there, and it was. Man, it was cold. It was sleeting sideways. I bet I bet there wasn't fifteen hundred people in the stands. And uh, it was okay. It was so a, this was a snow game. No, this ain't the snow game. The snow game okay. came after came after me. But okay. this, this this was a sleet game. This was a sleeting sideways game. <laughs> it was a uh, it was it was cold and it was tough and it was a it was just a tough uh, it was a tough day. And 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 Tech was like. Like like to say about well, like Baylor, you know, or if 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 you ain't ready to play, they're gonna beat you, you know, and, and especially there. Uh, the uh, I remember we we ran the ball pretty well that game against them. Uh, I can't remember. I, I can't even remember what the score was, but I remember that they were ahead of us and we came back and beat them, and uh, it was a. Uh, it was it was a it was a tough day, but uh, but a lot of things had to happen. That 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 was the day everything happened. I think uh, we were watching the game in the in the in the lobby before we left the, the hotel where Baylor had beat Texas or something like that, and A and M had to beat SMU or S- SMU had to beat Arkansas or something. I mean, about four things had to happen for us to have a chance. Well, well, we got in the fourth quarter. We got word that that A and M had beaten Baylor, or Baylor had beaten A and M, or, or whatever it happened. And I remember us the, the the huddle just perked up. I mean, I remember I remember saying, "Hey guys, you know we're down a few points here. If we go down here and score." We got to check. All, all we got to do is be rice, and, and we're going to the Cotton Bowl. And we, I bet we scored in five plays. When, like, <laughs> it was it was crazy. That was a uh, that that night. One thing, one other thing had to happen in the in the in the pilot of the plane kept us abreast. I, Arkansas and SMU was playing, and one had to beat the other, and I can't remember which one it was. I think I think SMU had to beat Arkansas. And they did, and we we got off the bus at the back of the dorms, and I, I remember Audrey saying, "Hey guys, we can do this, but let's let's, let's focus on Rice now because <laughs> uh, we if we we got to beat those guys, and they're, they're not going to not show up, you know." Yeah, they're definitely there to play spoiler. They're going they're going they're going to try to beat us. They did they, they dislike us just much, about as much as everybody dislikes us. <laughs> Baylor beat Texas that day. SMU beat Arkansas. A and M beat TCU. That's it. That, and then you that, that's the one I couldn't remember. Yeah. But we didn't we didn't know we didn't know the Arkansas uh SMU game. We, we didn't know what was going on there until we, we were on the plane coming back. Okay. And uh we we found out through the pilot that uh SMU had beaten Arkansas, and we felt pretty good at that time. Uh, but we just had to beat Rice. That's all. And they were they weren't gonna they weren't gonna let us beat them. We had to go beat them. So you come home, you play that game in the Astrodome. What is that like? And then what is the celebration like? Uh, it was a tough. It was it wasn't an easy game. Uh, I remember. Raymond Tate, rest in peace. He broke a 
uh, he, I don't know how long a run it was. It was a long run, but he must have broke five, six tackles. And it was incredible. And I think we ended up beating him by 12 or somewhere along in there. Uh, but after the game, by that, that Cotton Bowl guy, Brock or whatever his name is, yeah, he, uh, he, he was in there and gave us a – trophy and gave us the invite and all that stuff and uh, it was pretty crazy it was uh he didn't i don't think he enjoyed doing that but uh, <laughs> we, enjoyed, we enjoyed watching him do it <laughs> what about the cotton bowl what about the the leading up to it and then playing in that game uh we were just so happy that we were there he that that, that brock guy came to practice one one day <laughs> I remember this, and he he wanted to talk to all of us. He said, "You know, we uh, there's no uh, merit to the reports that we didn't want y'all to be there, blah blah, you know, and all that kind of stuff." Well, that just that just told us that he didn't want us to be there, and we we got a little <laughs> upset about that. But uh, <laughs> no, it was uh, it was it was good. I rode up there with the, uh, you know, we we had a we had a pretty good. Bunch of practices and felt pretty good about things. And I remember going up there to, uh, with uh, Brian Tackle, you know, rest in peace again. But uh, yeah, we we stayed at a fancy hotel. I can't remember the name of it. Up there, off six thirty-five somewhere. And uh, and it was hot all week that week. It was hot. And, you know, we went through all the festivities and all the dinners and all this, everything like that. And it, all day, I mean, every all week it was hot. And then we wake up, the, you know, next morning it's 30 degrees and, and <laughs> bad again, you know. But, uh, yeah, but, you know, Boston College was a great football team. They, 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 had, they had beaten a lot of good teams, you know, before they got to us. Uh, Booty – that game really didn't do a whole lot against us. They ran over us. They ran the ball a lot. And uh, I think his name was Stratton or somewhere, somebody like that. Uh, their running back had a really good day. Uh, we were down pretty pretty, pretty bad quick. I think uh, 31 to 7 or something at one time. And I, I think we, uh, last play of the first half or close to it, we, came, we, we scored a touchdown and make it 31 uh, 14. And we went in the locker room, and uh, it was a pretty solemn locker room. Where we, 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 we hadn't give up, but it was a uh, – but Coach Yoma was always good about that. You know, if, if he, didn't, he didn't really say a whole lot. He just got everybody in front of the board. What's this guy doing? What's this guy doing? What's this guy doing? And then he he out on what they were doing, and then they, they coaches would go talk, and then he'd just come back, and there'd be a – you know, kind of a pep talk going out. He he didn't really scold people at halftime one way or the other, or get too high or get too low. He was he was really good at halftime. He 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 just wanted to know what was going on, and uh, so we told him. And uh, we came out the the second half, and uh, we scored twice. Uh, we 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 ran the ball in one time, and uh, Audrey scored on a. On, a, on an interception, so it was 31-28. All of a sudden, we're, we're, we're back in this game, you know? Yeah. And uh, we get the ball back, and we're marching. I think we're down there about the 35 or 30-yard line. I'll never forget this. And Raymond broke off a pretty good run, and we're down there. We're, we're, we're going we're gonna to score. And uh, I remember looking up, and I see a guy – I'll never forget this. A guy swinging in to Carl Hilton. You know, he, he he missed Raymond, and he swung around, and he hit Carl Hilton from the back. On his back, and the referee called clipping on Carl. I never forget that. I, 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 it's like it's etched in my brain that that like a movie clip. And Carl was just beside himself, and 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 just. You know, pleading his case, well, that wasn't going to help none. And so we got 15 yards for that. And then the next play, they called uh, our center uh, for Holden, and he swore he didn't do that either. So <laughs> anyway, that kind of that kind of ruined all our, all our momentum. We had to punt. They came back and scored, and then uh, that was about the end of that. 
So how was it for you <clears throat> going to the Cotton Bowl? I mean, you said earlier that looking looking at, at schools from high school, you just wanted to go to the Cotton Bowl. That's it. Yeah, that was uh, that was the. Uh, I mean, yeah, I'd, 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 I'd love to want it, but hell, I was there. That's that was a uh, something that all Texas high school kids at that time basically wanted to do was go was play in the Cotton Bowl, play in the Southwest Conference, play in the Cotton Bowl. And uh, yeah. it was, you know, when you when you think about all the great players that played through, went through that uh, locker room and down on that field and all the great history of it, uh, it's really a humbling thing for me. It was hum humbling and gratifying at the same time. It was uh, right. It was uh, like I said. I, I wish we could uh, the turnout of the game would have been better, but I can always look back and, for my generation anyway, can can say I was there. Uh, you know, I don't think these the, the generation today understands the history behind that game, but or the San Francisco Southwest Conference is not there anymore. Right. Uh, I think it's a, uh, it, for me, it, it culminated everything football wise I could have ever wanted to do. Uh, I wasn't going to go anywhere further. Didn't want to, to be honest with you. Uh, <laughs> You'd had enough. I, yeah, I'd had, I'd had enough. I was, uh, they, they, they asked me to go up to Canada, try out. And I, I ain't doing that. I'm, I'm, I'm through. I'm, I'm tired. So, I just uh, <laughs> so uh, yeah, it was a it was a really a uh, it was really a great week until the final gun went off, you know. Uh, right. I just uh, and it, and playing for the people that I played for, Coach Yeoman, Coach Willingham, Coach Red, Coach Zerline. I mean, those guys were those guys were the great, the best of the best. I, there was nobody better at what they did than, than those guys. They uh, they were great teachers. They were great strategists. You know, Coach Yeoman. A lot of people don't know Coach Yeoman called all the plays right there. There was nobody up in the up in the booth telling him what to call or what defense they were. They, we we didn't audible one time. That is in my whole career. And we really? never went on anything. We never went on anything but down. <laughs> we didn't. We didn't go on one. We, nobody could hold their water that long. We had to go on down. Everybody knew exactly what we were fixing to do. They just they had to stop it. You know. <laughs>